function. So, sige, last time, we discussed the first parts. Okay, we have the introduction, the statement of the problem, hypothesis and assumption, and the significance of the study. So, this evening, evening na no, we will continue with the theoretical framework. Okay? Lahat naman tayo, no? Quantita. Ah, wala pala. Systematic. Okay, we have a systematic review na study. So, most of you class will be really doing the theoretical framework. For the systematic review, um, yeah, meron siya, pero depende sa study. Okay? So, please coordinate with your advisor if your study needs a theoretical framework or not. But what is a theoretical framework? This In this section class, you will be presenting, identifying, and you will be presenting the theory. Pero hindi naman siya ano ha, yung talagang uh, strict na dapat theory talaga. Pwede din naman siyang principle, pwede law, uh, wherein we are going to anchor our research. Okay? So the central theme of our research will be anchored here in the theory. Okay? So ano yung uh, kailangan yung i-discuss? and we include in this part we have syempre first the name or the names of the authors or or the person who postulated that theory law or concept okay and you have to include the part of the theory that is relevant sa research ninyo and the last part you will be doing a synthesis wherein you are going to relate the theory to your study, especially the findings of your study. So let me give you an example. So you will have a picture on what you're going to write in the theoretical framework. So in this study, the goal is to actually, itong example na ito ha, the goal is to make a laboratory manual for example, what, what subject is this? Example pharmacology. Again, the goal is to make a pharmacology uh, laboratory manual for pharmacology. So the theory na ginamit dito is the theory of constructivism. Bakit? Theory of constructivism talks about um, how a person learns if he or she has an experience over that thing or over that situation. So definitely sa... Example, in learning pharmacology or in learning other subjects, that's the reason why we have laboratory uh, component for us to really experience doing these procedures so that we will know what to do. So, yun din yung theory of constructivism. I-experience mo siya para ma-learn mo siya. Okay? So, yung study, the theoretical framework of this study is anchored in the theory of constructivism. So look at your research, look at your title, and you have to research for the, the most appropriate theory that you're going to include in the theoretical framework. So it may be a theory in education, depending in your study, especially example yung sa study about educational video, no? Um, Kanino nga study yun? Kina Nicole siguro yun? Um, you, you can look for theories sa education uh, wherein you are going to anchor the use of educational video to increase, like example, the learning, the level, level of knowledge of the respondents. Ganon. Or uh, there are studies na kailangan theories sa psychology. Okay. Actually, this one is under the psychology, no? And meron ding scientific theory, scientific laws, depending again in your research. So aside from this, let us have more examples. Hindi ko i-discuss class yung lahat ng theory ha. Abdan tag-sham-sham, ana. Daghan ka yung theory sa education, daghan ka yung theory sa psychology, and yung iba pa yung mga scientific theories natin. So, kung i-discuss ko yun sila lahat, next year pa tama human. <laughs> so, 
ano siya, it's up to you, class, na to look at your research and to look for the most appropriate theory wherein you're going to anchor your research. So let us have first um, this one. This is a descriptive study. For those who have quantitative descriptive research design, ito yung example natin. We have medical fake news and fear mongering during the COVID-19 pandemic, the impact on the vaccine confidence among the millennials. Let's look at their um, theoretical framework kung anong theory ang ginamit nila dito. So look at how they present the theory. First, they name the theory. Actually, this is a model. This is a psychological model. No? This is health belief model. Yan yung ano nila, theory nila. Okay, and then afterwards, you have to identify who made that theory, who postulated that theory. And then the next part, they discuss na the part of the theory uh, which is relevant in their research. And dito sa baba, they have the synthesis relating the theory to their research. So diba, their research is about medical fake news and yung impact nun sa vaccine confidence. Na kung titingnan natin yung ginamit nila na health belief model, ano daw ibig ano dong, um ibig sabihin nitong health belief model? This is to predict health related behaviors especially when engaging with health services. So nakalagay dito um excuse me uh, we have here the desire to avoid illness or get well if already ill and the belief that a specific health action will prevent or cure disease. So when you decide to get vaccination, you're actually having a belief na getting this vaccine can either prevent or cure the disease. So, yun din yung ibig sabihin ng health belief model. Yung paniniwala mo will dictate your action in availing these health services. That's health belief model. And yun ang theory wherein they anchor their research. So, sa last part, they have the synthesis that the theory could explain the change in the behaviors of the individuals to the decisions in accepting or rejecting the vaccine. Kasi their belief in medical fake news will really, uh, for them, merong influence, merong impact on their decision whether to get vaccinated or not. Okay? So again, First, before making your theoretical framework, make sure that you know your research problem, you have your research problem, and from there, start uh, looking or searching for the most appropriate model or appropriate theory wherein you are going to anchor your research. Okay, let us have another example. Uh, this one is another uh, quantitative descriptive research. This is concept paper. Where is that? Yeah. And this one. Okay. So, ito naman, cap. I don't know kung may cup pa na study. Parang I think merong cup, no? Pero yung cup nila is on face mask disposal sa COVID-19. Knowledge, attitude, and practices sa face mask disposal. Let us try to look at their... So, ayan. ayan, theoretical framework. What theory ang ginamit nila? This study is based on the theory of planned behavior or the TBP. Now, TBP is applied to showcase the relationships between knowledge, attitude, and practices towards face mask. Okay, so they have first presented what is their theory. Second, they have identified the author of the theory. 
and then they discussed here the part of the theory class that is relevant to their research and then last on the last part they have the synthesis relating the theory to their own research okay so plant behavior to sa kanila wait lang hindi kasi ako masyadong familiar with the theory of the plant behavior but let me check how this is related to their study yung ano ito ito ah yung TBP pala ginamit ano ito TBP has been successfully used in various fields to study behavior in relation with the solid waste management behaviors and the other health promotion behaviors okay so most likely knowledge, attitude, and practices sa pag-dispose sa mass. So yes, kasali siya dito. Okay. To health promotion. Okay. So ito yung theory class that states na yung, yung behavior niya over a thing. Okay. For so example, face mask disposal, the behavior class, um, yung goal niyan is to promote health. So that is theory of planned behavior. Paplanuhin mo na ganito yung gagawin mo to achieve something, especially sa health na, na part. Okay? So kaya doon nila inangkor yung study nila about knowledge, attitude, and practices. They want to know the knowledge of the uh, the respondents sa pagtapon ng face mask, yung attitude nila, and syempre yung practices. Kasi na-mention nila dito na syempre face, proper face mask disposal uh, would lead to prevention in the transmission of the disease and yung sa mga environmental pa na condition. So kayo din, hanap din kayo ng study wherein maa-anchor nyo talaga yung research ninyo. Now, how about for experimental na study? Kasi meron ding mga experimental ang study dito, no? Wait lang, ha? Nag-isip hmm. ako kaninong study. Sorry, ha? Nasa email ko kasi talaga ito lahat. Hmm. Ay, this is research forum. Simple in red format. I don't know if this is the final paper, but let's just look at it if this is unedited or not. So just try to look at their theoretical framework. So here is the theoret theoretical framework. For ano class, for experimental studies, mahirap, mahirap maghanap ng theory wherein we are going to anchor our research. So, most of the time, what we are going to do with the theoretical framework um, for the experimental research involving plants sa kanilang pharmacological, pharmacologic action, naghahanap tayo ng studies, okay? Studies stating or studies about the phytochemical constituent of the plant. Okay, so example, this plant, example, rambutan contains this phytochemical. Uh, they, they named it actually here. It's the gallic acid. And according to studies, ito yung mga nakalagay dito sa baba. According to studies, this gallic acid has the ability to, uh, ex uh, what study is this, decrease or reduce the blood sugar level. So, yun yung diniscuss nila dito sa theoretical framework. Now, since again, this plant material has this phytochemical constituent, then you have uh, considered it as a potential drug for diabetes. So, that's how you make the theoretical framework for experimental studies. Because again, it will be very difficult for us to look for scientific theories that will be related 
to our research. So doon tayo banda sa why did you consider this plant as a potential example uric acid lowering agent? May reason talaga yon. Okay? Diba yung mga studies sa uric acid lowering, pinapahanap kayo ng plant. No, hindi lang siya basta-basta nga, ah, gusto ko rambutan, ma'am. Ah, gusto ko bayabas, ma'am. Dili siya nga na. You have to have a reason why you are considering this plant as an agent to lower the uric acid level. So, most likely, paano natin siya gawin? You look for uh, what is in the plant Okay, that is a possible uh, agent to lower the blood, uh, it, no, the uric acid level. Okay, yan yung i-discuss ninyo sa theoretical framework. Any question or clarification? I don't have a sample at uh, here. I don't know uh, if I have a sample here sa... May edited ba ako dito sa R&B dissertation ko? Yung sa systematic review? I'm not really sure. Tapat ako nilagay dito kasi. I don't have a sample. For qualitative research, we usually don't include theoretical framework. Oh, yeah, I don't have... I don't. Do you have a theoretical framework? Wala, I only have an RRL here. So, wala akong example with the theoretical framework. So, just look at na lang your research. Ano ba yung topic niyo sa systematic review? And from there, you may look for the theory wherein you are going to anchor your research. Okay? The group that will be doing the systematic review. Did I miss something? Like, anong research, anong type of research design ang hindi ko na-discuss? I have given you an example of the theoretical framework ng quantitative descriptive. I have also given you the quantitative experimental. No, wala kayong kaparehas na research sa school. Wale. You will be the very first group who will be studying that and at the same time, you are the very first group in the school to do a systematic review. <laughs> Kaya nyo yan, laban Japan. Okay. Sige. So after the theoretical framework class, we have the conceptual framework. Now, in the conceptual framework, this is where you are going to identify the variables of your study. Okay? You are going to illustrate and draw the relationship of the variables of your study. So, um, the most common variables in a research class is syempre the independent and dependent variable. So last time I have already discussed this, right? When you say independent variable, this is also known as the predictor variable. We manipulate this in the study. We actually control it in the study. And this is the variable that is presumed to cause a change or an effect in to another variable. So, the one class na mag-change, syempre, will be the outcome variable and we call that the dependent variables. Okay? So, again, we also call the dependent variables as the criterion variable, response, outcome variable, or the effect. Okay? So, kailangan mo munang i-manipulate ito before you'll get the dependent variables. Um, aside from the IV and the BV, we also have moderating and mediating variables and we also have the so-called confounding variables. We'll have to discuss that later. Okay? So, again, for research var variables, because when you say variables in research, these are concepts or constructs that can be observed and we have like measurable values for this okay so like sa independent variable we can measure it 
aside from controlling it. And that is also true with the dependent variable. So sinabi ko na kanina, ID class is presumed to cause a change or an effect to another variable. And thus, the one that will have the change is the so-called DV, dependent variable. Now, let's talk about the moderators or the moderating variable. See, moderating variable can either be a qualitative variable. When you say qualitative, we don't have numerical data or numerical values for that. And then, uh, pwede din siyang quantitative. So, we may have class a numerical data. But please take note that when you say moderating variable, they may cause a change in the direction or the strength of the relationship between the independent and the dependent variables. Okay, let's have an example. You have here, this one is a study is a library. Availability of reference manuals or like books in the library. And then the librarian would like to study the number of rejects, okay, based on the availability of reference manuals. Now, kapag ka ganito lang ang relationship, okay lang naman ito. Ma Makokontrol natin ito. Ito yung mga available manuals example for the pharmacy department, okay? And then, measure ngayon ng librarian kung how many of that manuals will be rejected by the readers. But if you're going to look at it deeply, we can actually uh, list here that there is a moderating variable. Uh, this variable can change this one, the effect, the, the direction, and the strength of the relationship between these two. And we have here identified interest and inclination. Kasi ito nga, meron kang available na mga reference manuals and then ito yung number of rejects. Pero in between, pwede natin i-consider ah, kaya siguro siya na-reject kasi titingnan muna natin yung interest and inclination of our readers. So based on their interest or inclination, magbabago ito. Magbabago yung pagtingin natin sa relationship between the two. So, kaya, when you're going to draw them, nasa gitna siya. Kasi moderating variable siya. Now, let's have another example. We have here hours of study. You want to know the relationship between the hours of the study of study time ng mga students and you want to know if there is a direct or an inverse relationship with their exam score. Pwede din naman yun, diretso na. Think, survey mo sila. Ito yung number of hours na nagsistudy sila. And then collect natin yung exam scores. And then let's see kung may relationship ba doon. Pero kung titingnan talaga, pwedeng magkaroon ng moderating variable. And that is the IQ of the student. Kasi there is also a possibility plus na pwedeng hindi hindi pala siguro talaga direct yung relationship nila na mataas ang hours of study, tataas din yung exam score. Meron din sigurong effect yung IQ doon. Kasi baka merong student na hindi naman talaga siya nagsistudy for a long period of time, pero mataas pa rin yung score niya kasi mataas yung IQ niya. So kung titingnan natin, yung moderating variable nasa gitna siya i weigh niya yung relationship between the independent and the dependent variables. Ano yun? Kahit related, wala po talaga. Wala <laughs> Wala Walang nag-study ng virtual internship. Walang nag-study ng internship actually. Last time. Wala. Labaw ng virtual internship. So, so yung title ninyo? Systematic review on virtual internship versus the on-site. Tama ba? Uh, kung sa on-site na internship, I guess meron kayong makikita. 
pero sa virtual walang nag-study niyan sa school. So you have to look for other sources for that. <laughs> oh, na libog na ko. Nag-mix up na. Delete na yung mga kagrupo ni Florence. Kung saan yung study? Quantitative, descriptive, Sandra? <laughs> Quantitative, descriptive, wala. Wala sa virtual, pero sa on-site, meron ata. Pero that was long time ago, so hindi siya, that was ano, pre-pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> Kari ka papaya dito yung tabang. Nag-mix up na kami na kung we are talking about the systematic review. <laughs> okay. Again, uh, we don't have a study about internships at school. Especially the virtual. So what we have is yung ano, on-site na internship. I think we have sa pharma competencies at yun na na-achieve nila sa community internship. Ah, isa kayo ng ano. <laughs> Buti yung nag-mix up na siya kayo. Tingon mo ko kasi mamabe. Sabi ako si Florence kasi si Florence diba under kay mamabe pero ikalawang grupo noon under kay mamabe. Okay, okay. Anong naglibog? Mga, mga team queen ko dahil yung... <laughs> may pa mo ka lang nagsugod naman no grabe ka diligent nagsugod na yun sila sa inyo research galaw-galaw everyone yung mga ibang grupo dyan nag-concentrate sa daw sila sa ilang exam basta ha sana ninyo inyo ang pick og og inyong fee farm o ano sabi niya subject ron micro <laughs> tapos let's have the research hunted sunday yung na si ma'am Tingnan si ma'am. Ma'am, pa-extend please. After exam. <laughs> Tingnan mo mag-study sa ako. Charot. Dagan kayo mag-study yan. Tingnan ninyo si madam. Nga, kung diligent makaya. Himuan ninyo ang taman sa makaya. Pero pag diligent makaya, hindi naman siguro manghangyo. <laughs> manghangyo lang mo. Okay. So another one, another example of a moderating variable. We have here relationship between stress and depression. We want to know kung meron ba silang relationship. Pag tumaas ba yung level of stress, that is, does it mean tataas din ng risk for depression ng person? So pwede din yan diretsyo. Pero if we want to know kung meron bang effect yung social support dyan, we can also include social support as a moderating variable. Kasi sometimes a person may have high level of stress, but due to this, nag-iiba yung direction. Hindi siya uh, mataas yung risk for depression, bumababa. So again, the moderating variable here can change the direction of the relationship or the strength of the relationship. You may also identify that in your research. Kung meron bang pwedeng maging moderating variable. Most of the time, it's IV and DV. Kailangan lang natin i-identify kung meron ba talagang moderating variable or not. Then we have here, relationship between teaching method and the academic performance. So in this study, they wanted to know kung meron bang direct relationship, kung maganda ba yung teaching method na ginagamit ng teacher, does it mean it would result to high level of academic performance also? Okay? So, pwede yun siya diretsyo na relationship. But then again, you may include children background as a moderating variable. Kasi minsan, matas lang talaga yung academic performance ng student kahit ano pa yung teaching method. Kasi merong effect doon yung kanilang background, study habit, their support, their environment, yanon. Okay? So, especially for quantitative descriptive studies, you may look uh, for moderating variables if any. Pero wala namang pilitan ito. Kung wala talagang moderating variable, then huwag kayong mag-include. Let's just have the independent and the 
dependent variables. Okay? So, in research class, in your paper, this is how you are going to present your conceptual framework. This is my study weight. Mali ako na share. Okay. For experimental research, ito yun. Yeah, and you will have to have a figure, a diagram showing the relationship. This one is unedited kasi kapag uh, conceptual framework, talagang magkadugtong ang arrow sa, sa box ng IV doon sa box ng DV. So as you can see, they have the independent variables, their treatment. Okay, kasi yan yung kinokontrol nila na itong group of mice na ito will receive the rambutan leaves, itong group of mice na ito will receive the positive control, and then ito naman negative control. So yung mga treatment that, that is uh, being controlled in the study, kaya included sila in the independent variable. And then syempre, the dependent variable will be the outcome since they are measuring the blood sugar level. Yun lang, yun yung dependent variable nila. Okay, you may also include the unit, kung anong unit ang gagamitin for the outcome that you you want to measure. Okay? So again, this is for an experimental research. Now, how about a descriptive research? Klikan natin yung um, medical fake news. So ganun pa rin naman yung sa descriptive research, your independent variable is the one being manipulated, the one that will, that is presumed to cause a change in another variable. So in this case, medical fake news and fear mongering during COVID-19. And yung me medical fake news na ito, meron bang effect on the vaccine confidence? So si vaccine confidence becomes the dependent variable. Okay, so you will really have a figure that looks like this in your paper. But it's not just about the figure. You, just, you also have to explain ano yung nasa figure na yan. Thus, you have here that textual presentation. Okay, explain you yung nasa figure class. By the way, hindi tayo pagandahan ng design sa ano, conceptual framework. Kailangan magkapareha yan sila ng box. The arrow is the arrow is connected and hindi tayo masyadong naglagay ng color for that. Now, for the systematic review na study, this is my conceptual framework. Nauna nga lang yung aking explanation of the figure and then I have the figure here. Okay, so ito yung conceptual framework of my study since this is systematic review. Pero sa inyo, systematic review lang ato sa inyo, wala nang meta-analysis. So forget about this kasi I have two things to do in my study, the review and the meta-analysis. So ito may for the Systematic review, you also have your independent and dependent variables. Sa independent variables, um, syempre ito yung, di ba piko tayo? Piko. Nasabi ko to sa inyo last time. Piko. Di ba P is population and then I is intervention. And then C is comparison and O is outcome. What you're going to place in the independent variable is yung in yung intervention and then in yung comparison. In this case, in my study, my intervention is metformin therapy for hospitalized COVID-19 patients. And my comparison is yung non-metformin therapy. So you have to look at your study kung ano yung I and C ninyo. And syempre, the outcome will be the dependent variable. So this is my outcome. Ito yung minimeasure ko in my study. Dalawa, mortality rate and blood glucose level. So tingnan nyo rin kung ano yung outcome ng study nyo. Ilagay niya dyan sa dependent variable. And that will belong in one box. And then you have another arrow here pointing to the synthesis of the findings. But class, um, Florence and groupmates, you only have the narrative review since ang gagawin nyo lang ay systematic review. Hindi na kayo magme-meta 
analysis. Okay? Meta-analysis involves statistical treatment. Okay? Dito lang kayo sa narrative review ninyo sa PICO. Okay? So, yan yung conceptual framework for the systematic review class. You have to explain what is in the figure also. So, you have a textual presentation included uh, there. So let's have our participation. Please send your answers on the chat box para ma-record yung inyong participation. Ha? Kahila ko na mo. <laughs> so, anyway, again sa chat box. Please identify the dependent variables. Number one. Sa mga given na ito, Dr. Smith examines daily exposure to a sun lamp. So that's one hour of exposure and no exposure at all. Then gusto niya malaman the impact on people's depression levels, especially in winter time. So what do you think is the dependent variable in this study? So letter A, you have one hour na exposure sa sun, sun lamp. Letter B, no exposure. And then letter C, depression. Ano yung, again, ating dependent variable here? A, B, or C? Remember, the dependent variable is B, outcome. Okay? Nga nung naman ay question mark in yung answer. Hindi <laughs> mo nang yung question mark. Siyempre, tama yung answer. Letter C, depression. Kasi ganito ha, si, si sun lamp exposure, siya yung magiging independent variable. Makikita nyo naman kasi may na-manipulate, i-group siya. Itong grupo na ito, one hour exposure sila sa sun lamp. Ito hindi sila i-expose. And then after that, i-measure kung magkaka-depression ba sila or hindi. So definitely, kung sinabi mong dependent variable, outcome yun. Ano yung outcome? After the exposure, i-check kung may depression ba. So, syempre, depression is the answer. Okay? I hope naintindihan yung independent and dependent variable. Now, number two, does age of the child, ito yung mga ages ha, influence when children can learn to read. So, what is again the dependent variable? Letter A, age of the child. Or letter B, level of reading. Let's check. Answer Jan. Okay, the answer is syempre letter B, level of reading. Kasi ang tinitingnan in this research, itong mga age, 4, 5, and 6, meron ba siyang relationship doon sa pag-learn uh, ng student or ng bata sa pagbasa. Okay, gusto niyang malaman kung meron bang influence yung age sa level of reading. So syempre, ang minimeasure dito, yung level of reading yung presume uh, yung nag uh, presume cost natin yung age so independent variable yung age level of reading ang dependent variable and then last we have time reading on exam per 4 months what's the independent variable sa <laughs> manjud Independent variable. Time reading on exam performance. Okay, the correct answer is letter B, exam performance. Kasi ang, minim, ang chinecheck dito, time reading, no? Example, siya isang, isang oras lang siya magbabasa. Ito, dalawang oras, siya tatlo. Tapos, to check kung ano yung exam performance niya, ang score, example score ito. Titingnan yung relationship kung tataas ba yung um, pagbabasa niya. Does it mean tataas din yung score niya sa exam, yung exam performance? So definitely ito yung outcome. Pag nagbasa ka, ano mangyayari sa score mo? Okay. <laughs> Nalibog. <laughs> okay, may nag-answer o letter A. Ay, independent ang sabi ko. 
<laughs> Ay, sabi ko kanina, Ay, we, we have independent variables sa time reading. Okay, and then this is the dependent variable. Tawa. Ako na yan, nalimog. <laughs> ah, sige. Tama. The independent variable is the time reading. And then the dependent variable, the outcome, is exam performance. <laughs> Muna. Kaulian na siguro. <laughs> Gabiin namang good. <laughs> Ato. Fake news. Tama yung answer. <laughs> Sige. And anyway, na, na, ano yun, na record. Na record ni siya sa video, na record pag yun yung answer. Ang, kapag ka gumagamit kasi ako ng Zoom, lahat ng answers niyo sa chat na nasasali siya sa pag-record. Okay, so nakikita ko siya. That's how I check if you are participating or not. Kasi most of you are not, ano, Um, turning on your microphone. So, dito ta sa chat. Okay? So, last part. Actually, this is not the last part. The last part of the introduction is the review of related literatures and studies. Pero let's have a separate discussion about that. Ito muna yung last part so far ng ating um, introduction section. The scope and the limitations of the study. So, pag sinabing scope, we are setting the boundary here. The coverage of our study. You have to set that kasi hindi pwedeng pag-aralan mo lahat. Okay? Masyadong wide yung coverage ng study mo next year pa mo mahuman. Sunod tuig pag yun. So again, we need to set limitations. We need to set the area of coverage or the boundaries of our research. And ano yung set natin? Number one, yung general purpose ng study niyo. Ito lang yung objective natin. You have to be clear with that. Also in the scope and delimitation. Ito lang yung gusto nating malaman. That's our objective. Gusto nating makuha. And we have to be clear also with the subject matter and the, and the topics to be studied or discussed in your research. Another thing that you need to set is the local of the study. You have to be clear with that. If you want all the residents of General Santa City, then your research local is General Santa City. Now, if you just want class a certain barangay in Jensan, then you have to be clear also what barangay are you going to study. Barangay Labangal, Barangay Kalumpang, etc. Okay? And what else? The population from which the respondents are going to be selected. So you have to be clear also with that. Yung example ko kanina, um, medical fake news and fear mongering among millennials. Okay? And vaccine confidence among millennials. So they, are, they were actually clear with their populations. Population. They just want to study the millennials in General Santos City. Okay? So it's up to you also kung ano yung magiging population ninyo. Okay? For experimental studies class, you just have to set what plant material are you going to study, what plant part. Kasi baka naman buong plant, no, gikan sa gikan sa dahon hangtod sa root inyuha jud siyang istadihan so medyo lisod lisod pud to next year pud na mahuman ana so you have to be clear also what part of the plant are you going to use for experimental studies okay and later na yung systematic review and lastly we have the period of the study so just like this you have here the aim of the study on the first part of the example followed by the subject matter, the things to be discussed in this research. And then we have here the respondents of the study. These are the graduates of BS Pharmacy students. And actually, the method of data gathering is quietly discussed here. So like using an interview guide, magi interview or through questionnaire. And then you have here the research local na the study will just be conducted at Jensen and at GSDMSFI pala and you have the time frame here. By the way, the time frame refers to the period wherein you are going to gather your data. 
Okay? So, hindi kasali itong SEM na ito ha kasi sa SEM na ito, you will just be making your paper. The data gathering procedure will commence on most likely end of January to April. So, yan yung ilalagay niyo dyan. Data gathering lang ha, na time frame. When are you going to do the experiment, the administration of questionnaire, and interview, syempre yung interview ninyo dyan. Ninyo dyan. So, yan yung ilalagay niyo sa scope and delimitation. Questions? For clarifications? Let me check for systematic review. <laughs> kasi iba kasi yung format ng systematic review. But let's see. But you have the conceptual framework. I think you also have the theoretical framework depending on your study. You have the introduction, review question, RRL. Sa format ng school ano, class, uh, Florence and groupmates, nasa huli itong RRL ha. And then after the RRL, you have Conceptual framework. You have the conceptual framework. Yeah, walang scope and delimitation. <laughs> Florence and groupmates, wala tayong scope and delimitation for the systematic review. Kasi isiset mo kasi yung scope ng mga studies na i-include nyo in the systematic review. Dito na siya sa ikalawa, sa methods. Sa IMRA, di ba? M is methodology or methods. So, wala kayo niyan. Okay? Questions before ta manihapon na. Ah, 